But I don't know what it was, but I came across, I think it might have been a TikTok or some form of video where someone shared that they were selling KDP. And since I used to work for Amazon, I knew what KDP was, but I, ne like, I never put one-on-one -on -one together that you could create journals. Like I thought you can only publish books. And then I realized, oh, wow, yeah, of course, like if you add less text to a page and you add lines, then you can kind of turn it into a journal instead. Like you don't have to be an author, like you can just make use the same process to create a journal, right? Yeah. And use Amazon as a printing machine, as a customer getting machine and delivery. And I, I didn't realize that before. And then when I realized that I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was really cool. So I was looking at keywords and I had noticed that Manifestation Journal was, had a good search volume at that time already, it had 10,000 searches. And I noticed that because I was working with a one-on-one -on -one client and we were look, looking a lot around that niche and I kept seeing Manifestation Journal. I'm like, oh, so interesting. Mm -hmm. And the competition is not strong. And, mm -hmm. and then when I saw the KDP thing, I'm like, oh my God, yes, Manifestation Journal is what it is <laughs> I want to do. And you created one in Canva, I think, right? So yeah. really bootstrapped it and then you put it on there and did it start selling immediately or what happened? It did, but I didn't quite notice it because KDP at that time didn't feel like something real yet. It, feel, it felt like a shiny new object <laughs> I had just distracted myself with, honestly. And then I think I didn't check into my KDP account for like six weeks or so. And then I checked and I had made a thousand two hundred plus dollars in the first month of the book being live. And I hadn't even realized it. And at that moment, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> this is a really cool thing. Like I need to do this. And that was the first time that I really seriously pursued it. Yeah. And I shared about it in the Facebook group as well. Like, oh my goodness, this is what happened. And then a lot of people yeah. had interest. And when you say you made thousand, I think that works a little bit differently with KDP. So we can also explain that because I think on KDP, what you get is not like sales. That's actually the royalties you get. Like it's almost pure profit. Is that right? Exactly. It was a hundred percent pure profit. I had no ads. I had nothing. I only had uploaded it and then forgot about it. So cool. And then I checked back. Yeah, I think it was it was a little bit of it's not common for that to happen. I really have to say this. It's not common. Um, it was a mix of having the right niche. I had a cover that I think for that time was attractive. And I didn't have a lot of competitors. So it was a perfect mixture there that allowed that to happen. You know, I, I always believed like the more we do, the luckier we get. Mm -hmm. But it's a certain type of people that does so much and that tries so much. What would you think? Have you always been that type of person? So ha have you always been this hungry? And what came first, like the hunger for personal development or did you always want to grow in business? Oh, that's a good question. I think my first hunger was just for life. And that sounds so strange, but... I really wanted to experience a lot of things very early on. So initially we had nothing to do with business or money because I had a very different opinion at that time. I, I saw myself more as a hippie and it was traveling. So I, for me, the hunger came through traveling very early in my childhood and then when I was 17, I went to Transylvania for a month and then with 19, I left Germany to Australia and I spent eight years abroad so I did a lot of like backpacking and traveling through India alone and I think this developed a strong want to create a big business because in order to live my life fully I need to have money and in order to have a lot of money I need to have a business that was what I thought because I I skipped university to mm -hmm continue my travels because I felt like that was the biggest, bigger university for me. And I think it really taught me a lot because I had to become extremely resourceful um, doing it on a small budget and mostly alone. So I think that was a training that I didn't realize was very useful later on.
So it was more about being able to collect experience rather than, you know, growth oriented. But I feel like I associate you a lot. So when did this, the, when did the growth come in? Was it almost like a necessity to be able to grow the business? I think it came before because I, I, I felt like I always had a, a strong growth mindset. Mm -hmm. Even before my travels, I was very ambitious. Just I was ambitious for other things at that time. And I want to realize how can I make those dreams possible? Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that creating a business was going to be something that I would be so passionate about. I hadn't had any experience with it just yet, but I was very hungry for life already. And I was reading the self-development books very early. And yeah, I think that was something that has been around since I was a child. Absolutely makes sense. There's so many questions I want to ask you. Like, for example, you are a business owner that actually makes the majority of their income from what they actually do. And then a side of it is coaching, right? Can you maybe share how much of the monthly revenue is roughly from Amazon? How much is from coaching and why? And this is the question I always get. If you're making that, why are you sharing the secret in coaching, right? If you have, if you have the majority of the income on Amazon, why even bother coaching? Uh, I get this question. So I, I can briefly share. So my Amazon, uh, my coaching business is roughly at between 350 to 400, I think 400,000 is more accurate. That's not including some of the done for you that I have done. Why do I do it still? Even though my other businesses are at more than seven figures. I think there is like something within us that we like to share when we feel like we found we found our secret key or like feeling like I have found a method that truly works, that can be so transformational. And there are hundreds of niches. Like I'm not going to create a garden journal because I don't, I'm not into garden journaling. And there's, there's so many topics that I'm not interested in. Out of the topics that are available, I'm maybe interested into like five to 10 max, but there are hundreds of different topics. And I, feel that journaling is getting so popular, especially guided journaling. It's, I, f I believe that in the next 10 years, there are going to be so many guided journals for so many topics because people have read a lot of books, but I think the benefit of having something where you're actually working through it, that is not necessarily just a workbook, but a little bit easier than a workbook, I think it's going to be a very interesting next few years. And there are even statistics that they believe the journal and diary business industry is going to grow by 30% in the next five years. So it's not just for me, but also what I've seen through Amazon, the search volumes are growing year by year. There's so many new niches that are coming up. Last year, maybe some people know that the Shadow Work Journal went fully viral, bringing a new form of personal development on the radar of lots of people. And more and more people are looking for this type of journal for mental health or personal transformation. So I, I feel like I have to share it. You have such an abundance mindset. Did you always have that or did that grow with your business and with your income? I somehow can think about competition in a different way. I don't know if it's always been like that, but I have one-on-one -on -one clients that I made to my own competitors. Like I helped them find the same niche that I was already in and they're doing very well, but I'm not doing less well. You know, that's that I'm not, yeah. I don't believe that I'm going to do less well. I just like to see Amazon pages filled of my people. <laughs> and it's already starting to be that way. So I, I scroll through certain niches and I see like, oh, this is my customer and this is my customer. This is mine. And it's nice. 
So I rather have someone that I care about succeed than a fully strained like a full stranger. So I don't know. I I feel good about it. That's absolutely beautiful. I think what's also so interesting about you is you have always gone out and invested almost everything you had made completely again. And there's and you did that from kind of early ages on. What gave you the courage to do that? And what would you say to people who who keep wanting to have their business, but they they really struggle with the idea of having to invest either time and time and money for like a few years before they see a return? What would you tell them? Oh, that's a good question because it's interesting. I don't feel like I'm a very patient person, but if I look back in retrospective, I, I notice, oh, well, I'm willing to wait for a long time to get my benefits for my business. I have come to the conclusion that that's most likely the only way that really works in business. Like I have met so many people in business over the years now, and I've seen that very few succeed very quickly. And those that succeed very quickly, they have had many years in that head, years that I, I didn't know them yet. Um, and I know that about myself too. Like the first time that I wanted to create a business, that's many years before I did it. So it took a lot of tries and errors. I would say it just, it truly pays off. I believe in the compounding effect and leaving that at some point it's going to work and just sticking to it. I found that that was helpful to me, but I had small wins here and there. And I think that kept me motivated. So I was looking for evidence. I was like stacking evidence. And if I didn't have evidence for myself, I was looking at other people and using their success as evidence that this is possible. So if I saw someone else succeed, sometimes it would discourage me, but in most cases it would be like, oh my God, if that's possible, it must be possible. Then it's a numbers game. And so I just need to try and test <laughs> until I get there. But it's so easy for me to say this now because at the time when things are not working out well and they have often in the past not worked out well, that's not how I felt in that moment. <laughs> I, I felt discouraged, of course, but what else do you want to do? You just have to continue. <laughs> I often hear you talk about the compounding effect. Um, what is so special about that for you? Why do you hold that concept so near and dear to your heart? I deeply believe in it. And I believe that so many things compound. Like when I first got into wanting to start an e-commerce business and I had a failed Shopify store, like I tried a lot of these different things, but they were all learning. So they all compounded. And I felt like there was a little message each time I did something that didn't work out. And there was always a little piece that was so important. And I find that these experiences, then, you know, doing personal development, reading different books, following different systems. It didn't always show immediate results, but over time, the results suddenly started to like, com like compound in a way that the graph looked crazy, <laughs> you know, from an income perspective or from, um, yeah. I mean, you know yourself, right? Like if, if we look at your graph, It's a perfect compounding graph, <laughs> right? It's like a long, flat line <laughs> and like where you like nothing moves and then choo. <laughs> and, and people think, I think, yeah. I think people think it's that one thing you did at that point where things took off, but it's actually all the things you did before. And then that one thing kind of filled in the gap and suddenly things were working together and, and taking off. Exactly. And, and things that maybe didn't make sense and at that point of time, like maybe a training that you did or podcast, like I was listening to a lot of podcasts and I was doing a few random trainings, like sometimes they didn't really make sense at that time, truly because I didn't get the benefit right away, but later on, parts of those messages really helped me. And I also found that the most important compounding for me was 
my own personal development compounding because even though I knew the steps ahead of time of like theoretically how to do it, I had helped others and I was wondering why can I not do it for myself because there was a lot of like other things going on like self-sabotage, <laughs> mm -hmm. overthinking it, not trusting that I can do it. Like there was so much of that and that had also compounded over time that I was able to stack more evidence and trust more in, in myself. And I find that because my mindset has also compounded over time, I now dare to do things in a different way too. Do, do you sometimes look back and think, uh, because that happens to me sometimes now, I went through some courses where I was after like, oh, this was trash that was for nothing and then a few months or even years later i'm like oh i know now did that ever happen to you and then they made sense and then you're like oh now i get it yeah yeah certain concepts that at that time like huh and then later on i notice a lot of the nuances like when you're in the beginning I used to be so annoyed at all the nuances when people were teaching nuances. I'm like, oh, where's the meat of the, what do I need to do? Like, tell me what to do. And now the nuances make the difference. You know, it's the little shifts that make a difference. Like initially, if you would have told me about copywriting, I'm like, oh, how is that going to make a difference? <laughs> Like, I would be like, no, that's not going to build my business. But now I see, okay, messaging, how important that is and how that can really make or break something. So, yeah, a lot of like realizations in retrospective, like, okay, I wasn't ready to hear that yet at that time. How has your growth provided for others and at the same time maybe divided you from others? So when you think of your immediate family or friends over time, how has that allowed you to be better there for them? And how has it also set you apart from them? I felt that the more, like there was a time where I was hiding my success from people I knew from before. Mm -hmm. Especially my immediate family, like my father. Because I felt like I was going to be mm -hmm. judged very harshly and that com like how do, I, how do I say that? Misery likes company or company likes I don't know. Like I felt like when I felt miserable, it was so much easier to connect with people than when things were going well. But oh. I did a lot of work around it and then realized, okay, that's probably a lot of judgment that I have for myself and I got over it over time. And also what crystallized through it, like my best friends, like one of my closest friends, she has been such a rock for me and she has celebrated me like no, no one else. And it has created very strong bonds as well. Like for The ones that grew with, like, not necessarily did a business, like, they, they just felt happy where they were in their own life. And they were just, you know, we are celebrating together different milestones in our lives. So that was really great. And in terms of giving back to, to family or close ones, like, it was nice to be able to, to pay for a lot of things like holidays and, But mm -hmm. with close family, I think that's still a little bit of a tricky thing. <laughs> uh, I wish sometimes I that they I... would allow me to do more. But there's a lot of, I think, shame that comes up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is weird. I think that was for me personally also something. I was looking forward to that, to be able to give more, just to realize like people don't want to get more. <laughs> so... <laughs> And no. yeah, it's a weird, I think a weird feeling. I felt like people didn't want to be more, like I felt like I had to tell everyone, start your business, do this. Oh no, it's very easy. You can do this, this and that. And 
and people didn't want to hear it. <laughs> like people didn't want to hear that they could, st like if they, if they were struggling with something, I was like, wow, here's a solution Do this. <laughs> and no one liked that. And I was so disappointed. I'm like, wow, like, you know, <laughs> you could really make life so much easier. Like you're suffering for nothing. <laughs> But, you know, and I, I at some point stopped because it just didn't work and it made things worse. <laughs> and it's so funny because you're like, why do it, don't you know? It's like the best thing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think that's maybe a part why you actually want to have the membership in the community so you can pass on the excitement about it. That could be that that's actually an outlet for wanting to share the breakthrough and helping others to, to have the same experience. I think and so. And because your immediate environment does not receive that, you actually just say, okay, then I teach it to strangers. Absolutely. You're finally able to talk to people that want to hear this. And you get to geek out mm -hmm. about the business that you love. Like, oh my God, doing this and this and that. And people want to listen to it and they want to do it. And that's very satisfying and then seeing when they do it and then they're doing well and then it's like oh, I think just creating one part of my business would have me have a missing piece in the puzzle like for my own emotional side even though sometimes doing the coaching brings up a lot of insecurities and brings up a lot of like difficulties emotionally <laughs> sometimes but at the same time I feel like this is a piece that I need to mm -hmm. because I know if I only focused on my e-commerce business I would probably grow a lot faster and have much more focus and but at the same time I don't mind if it takes up a few years longer because I feel like this gives me a different sense of purpose helping other people and seeing those people because on Amazon, like I might get some reviews, but I don't see their transformation. I, I cannot see it. And maybe it's also like a feeling of significant, like there's a lot of stuff that comes in. Right. But it is a nice feeling to know that you had an impact on someone else's life. Mm -hmm. So beautiful, such a beautiful motivation. And I think it, the, it's that social component. And it's also when you teach others, you actually, find out things that then later help yourself as well. So you kind of in reverse also become a lot better at what you do because you have to figure it out time and time and time again. So you start to see patterns. Does that happen for you too? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I think I learn so much more by teaching others than doing it myself often. Because... Uh, I have a different standard when I talk to others than I have for myself. <laughs> so um, it, I think it truly also played a role in my Amazon business. Uh, so what advice would you give to a person listening who's starting from scratch or wants to accelerate the journey? What would you recommend to someone who is in one of those hopeless moments and thinks about, you know, throwing everything mm -hmm. away, but yeah. also can't stop? I feel the most important part for my journey was to build a muscle of being resourceful. The tactics, you will find them when you become resourceful. But even if you have the tactics and you are not resourceful long term, it's hard to make them work for yourself. So I found a mindset or a thought helped me. Like, There is a solution out there. It's just outside of my awareness right now. And someone else knows the solution. I just need to figure out who knows the solution. I find that that really helped me. So, and not only just finding people that know the solution, but always asking myself, well, at this point of time, I don't have the answer. There's someone else, me in the future that knows the answer. My job is just to figure it out. So I think a lot about figuring things out and being okay with messy action. Like I do a lot of messy action in my, my business. And I think that that was one reason that I was able to build 
such a big business and also built a multi six figure coaching business, which is also, I mean, on its own, not bad. And a lot of the things I did was chaotic and messy. And I kept thinking I would figure it out. And there's always a solution out there. And it's hard to believe that in the beginning, but the more you believe that, or the more often you think about that, then you have more evidence. And then I do evidence stacking. I do a lot of evidence stacking. So if I'm not sure about something, I, I look at my past. Well, I can figure things out. I figured this thing out, even though it's a different topic. And I, I will think about that. I'm like, okay, other people figured it out. There's, there must be a solution out there. And I find that that's the first step to building that muscle and it gets stronger and stronger. And then you, you're fine when things are messy or not working out because you know, okay, there's a solution out there. I just don't know it yet. My job is to find it now. Thank you so much for your time, Laura. That was incredible. Thank you for sharing your wisdom. I think you also brought a little gift for the listeners. Uh, can you tell us what it is? Yes, I got a uh, niche cheat sheet. It's basically a hundred plus niches, journal niches, so that you can get some inspiration. And if you've always wanted to create a stationary product, it can help you get going. Beautiful. Thank you so much.